Hey there, it's Mark Fig from the Hobbyist Hangout Podcast. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today as we talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. You know me because I love bullet journaling and planning. And as we are getting ready for the new year, I thought today we could talk about what goes into thinking about and planning for the new year and making that selection for your next notebook, your next planner, or the mix of those two things together. Before we get into our topic today, I do want to let you know there are two ways that you can help support this podcast. The first is through ratings and reviews on whatever platform you're listening on. If they allow for ratings and reviews, please give me those stars. Let me know what you're thinking about it and drop a review and let others know what you think about this podcast. The other way is through monthly donations. It's not a subscription. It's a free podcast. But if you want to help support, you can head over to anchor.fm slash hobbyist hangout podcast, and you can most certainly donate there. Whatever you think is fair. I'll leave that up to you. Also, if you're watching on any of the video podcast platforms, whether it be YouTube or Spotify, make sure to also give that like and subscribe as well. I'd love to have you come back for more topics as we continue along with the podcast. So let's go ahead and start talking about prepping for the new year. This is something that I've been doing for the past five years, that thing being bullet journaling. I really fell in love with the system. We talked about it in a previous podcast episode all about bullet journaling and the background on it. You know, I think about it every single year, like, is this still the right thing for me? Because I've definitely evolved in five years of journaling. When I first started bullet journaling, it was strictly there just to help me kind of grapple those tasks, make sure I was remembering to do the things that I said I was going to do. My job has changed multiple times over the year. And if you don't know, I mostly use my bullet journal for work and a little bit of personal as well. And even when I'm not using a bullet journal, maybe just another planner or just a blank notebook, I still use the method inside of there. It's really kind of ingrained itself in my brain and it works for me. This year, though, things have changed a little bit, and I'm going to talk about that as we get deeper into the podcast about what I'm doing specifically for 2023 and going to be trying something a little bit different this year. I'll still be bullet journaling, but I'm mixing it with a few other things. First, let's talk about you. Let's talk about maybe where you are right now. If you are a person who has never journaled before, but you're thinking about getting into it, perhaps, I wanted to give you a handful of tips that are helpful or were helpful for me and that I've heard from other creators as well that bullet journal on like what's been good for them. Because to be very honest with you, it can be a lot, especially if you're doing your research right now, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, you're on Pinterest, you're on Twitter, you're looking at content on TikTok and you're like, okay, those are really beautiful spreads. That's a lot. I'm just trying to really understand my life right now. I don't need to start doing all of that. (laughs) It can be a lot. So what I like to tell people as they're getting up and running and started is this is hard, right? Practice what you preach here, Mark, but don't overthink it. When you're just getting started, let's use bullet journaling specifically, right? If you're going to get started with a bullet journal, the most important part is just understanding the method and understanding how it actually works. Don't even take a marker or a colored pencil or paint or anything into your journal. Don't even start there. Start with the method itself. And there's a few ways that you can start to understand this. There is a ton of content on YouTube. One of my biggest videos that I have out there right now actually talks about setting up a bullet journal in a line notebook, just a crappy, you know, not the one I used, but like you could use anything you want. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Of course, Ryder Carroll, who is the creator of Bullet Journal, also has the Bullet Journal Method book that you can read. I have it. I've read it every year. I go into it and I read it again. And something like I'm learning every single time, it's a good reminder for myself just to kind of take myself back a little bit. I get so deep sometimes into thinking about the content I'm creating online, whether it be for YouTube or Instagram. I just forget about the basics. And I'm like, Mark, just, just go back to the basics and, and do that. And it's so refreshing to do that sometimes. Um, there's also a really cool uh, bullet journal basics and beyond course. So I took it this year. Um, I don't know if I, I think I've told most people, but I'm an affiliate with bulletjournal.com, which was like a dream as a, you know, a small boy who was looking to start his bullet journal, you know, bulletjournal.com is like, it's the thing, right? And it's been really cool over the past few years that I've been able to create content for them. And now being a part of their affiliate program is great. They have a brand new course that I was just able to take called Bujo Basics and Beyond. 
And this is writer Carol going through kind of end-to-end bullet journal. He's even included some new material, kind of updated material in there about the bullet journal method that just blew me away. I actually have an entire notebook, an entire notebook, but a notebook that I use to take my notes on it. And I probably have six pages of notes. And I've been doing this for a long time. I feel like five years is a really long time to be bullet journaling. And I learned so much from it. So whether you want to get the book, whether you want to get the notebook, whether you want to buy that class, I do want to let you know that I have a discount code that you can use. At checkout, just use men who bullet 10, and that'll save you 10% off any of your purchases through bulletjournal.com. I have a few other affiliate codes all around the internet. I'll put stuff in the show notes for you down below. But really, that's the most important one because I think that bulletjournal.com I mean, it's the mecca of all the things. It's the originator. It is the brand, right? So if you're going to go to the source, that is the source. Of course, you can listen to other people. You can watch those videos, but that's the real deal. That's where you're going to go to get the things that you need. When you're thinking about those notebooks, whether you want to dive right into you know, the official bullet journal, which is just a Loystrom 1917 notebook with some extra fun features in it, really just think about what you need to do with it. If you are the type of person who is interested in bullet journaling or journaling, but doing it in a creative way. You want to find paper that's going to be like 120 GSM or 160 GSM. Uh, Loistrom actually makes 120 GSM notebook. The Edition 2 bullet journals have that. Of course, Archer and Olive is out there with like really thick paper as well. We have a lot of different options when it comes to that. And you want to just make sure you have that because sometimes that thinner paper, it's not going to work out too well for you. And I think you're just going to get really discouraged, honestly. But regardless if you do that or not, like just remember that you want to focus on the the basics, right? Like I said, and really get down the method before you add those things in. The other thing is be prepared to make mistakes. I, every year on my, I call it my Bujoversary, but on the day that I started bullet journaling, April, 2017, I always post my very first picture of my bullet journal, which was me making a mistake. It was the first page and I had to white it out. <laughs> I was so mad at myself, but I was like, no, this is a really good learning moment though. You know, this is going to happen and it happens a lot. And I make mistakes all of the time. If you ever watch my plan with me videos that I do on Sundays on a uh, YouTube, I make mistakes all the time and I keep it in there because that's realistic. I make mistakes. I smear ink. I write things in the wrong spot. It happens. So just embrace those mistakes. Don't worry about it. Also, you don't have to show your bullet journal to anyone. I know that's like a really weird thing, especially if you're keeping it and you're in social media and you feel like you have to share it. Like, do know that you don't have to share your notebook if you don't want to. No one else has to see it. You don't have to post a picture of your bullet journal to be a bullet journaler. Just like to throw that out there because I think some people think that they have to show it if they're using it. You don't have to ever show a damn thing. So don't ever worry about that. The other thing is to really make sure that journaling, regardless if it's bullet journaling or maybe it's just regular journaling, maybe it's even just like keeping a daily log, whatever that might look like, make sure that you're spending the time and really focusing on it. Like any good habit, journaling is like going to the gym, but for your mind in a way. If you want to get fit, if you want to lose weight, if you're trying to build strength, you have to be consistent about going to the gym, eating right, sleeping, kind of doing all of those things. If you want to really focus on getting yourself into a good spot through journaling, you have to do the same thing. I always talk about setting up time for myself in the mornings and right before the end of the day, just to look back on my bullet journal. And writer Carol will talk about this and others will share the same thing with you as well. Sitting down for 10 minutes, five minutes, if you only have five minutes to do so, and reading over the things that you need to accomplish, writing down some thoughts, kind of dumping all of those ideas out of your brain, a really important thing to do. And whether you're doing that once or twice a day or however many times you feel like you need, just make sure that you're building that practice into what you're doing. You're going to find it to be really beneficial for you. And you find out that you really kind of enjoy it. You know, sitting down in silence with your thoughts sometimes can be difficult. Okay, turn on some music then. Like you don't have to take yourself so seriously inside of there to get started. The other thing that I'll share as a really good tip is finding yourself a really good pen. Like I said, you don't have to go all crazy with it, but sometimes just having a pen and not having to worry about maintenance of it is really great. Over time, I've definitely collected a lot of pens. <laughs> I have an entire shelf behind me of notebooks, an entire container of pens and pencils and things like that. But there is just some go-to true pens that I just absolutely love. 
You've probably heard me talk about it a million times before, but I really do love it. It's the Uniball Signo DX. I personally like the 0.38 millimeter tips or like a nice fine tip to it, but these are just great pens and they work and you can buy them in bulk and you never have to worry about it running out of ink unless you get to the bottom of your pen, of course. And if you lose it, it's totally okay because they're not super expensive. But this has just been a go-to pen for me for years. I also really like the Muji pens. Those were actually the pens that I used before I found out about the Uniball pens. Muji is a great just stationary store all around if you've never been or you want to check them out online or even Amazon. But these are the same type of thing. They're just a gel pen. They write well. They're super reliable. You don't have to do anything fancy with them. You know, Once you're done, you can recycle the plastic if you need to. But if you are looking for something to be a little bit fancier, you know, you can find really cool fountain pens out there or a cartridge pen so you don't have to fill it with ink. You just buy the little cartridges. I haven't played around with it very much yet, but there are a few pens that I like to recommend for anyone getting started. One of them actually was recommended to my kids. So we were at the DC Pen Show uh, over the summer and there was a brand out there. Uh, it's called Preppy. It's a fountain pen made in Japan. Supposedly one of the most popular pens uh, are fountain pens. And it comes with cartridges and you just pop it into the tip and then you can write with it. And then when you're done, you pop it out and you put a new one in. It's just super easy, but it has a really nice fountain pen tip to it. So you can be extra fancy without having to get deep into like purchasing fountain pens and figuring out the right nibs and things like that. There's all these like beginner ways of doing it. And I, and the reason I mentioned kind of moving into those types of pens is because sometimes that might be what inspires you to write more is having a nice pen. I know for me, if I have a crappy pen and it's skipping while I'm writing, with it. It's just making me mad and I don't want to use it. And I'm like getting mad at my bullet journal because for some reason I want to blame someone that's not me for picking a dumb pen. <laughs> but just having something like that can make you really want to sit down and write with it. And having a good experience is what it's all about. You don't get mad at your journal. You don't want to be mad while you're sitting down and writing things, um, unless that's a nice therapeutic way for you to get things out. But don't get mad at your journal. You didn't do anything to you. <laughs> it's there for you. It's your friend. Of course, there are a lot of different ways that you can go into journaling. So we've talked about bullet journaling a fair amount and going into like thinking about how you might go about it. But this year, I am going to be doing a mix of things for myself. So I am going to keep a bullet journal. Um, over on my YouTube channel, I actually have been doing a notebook review series. I love reviewing notebooks. I love notebooks. I love stationery. You should know these things about me now. If you don't, now you do. So for this new year, I'm actually going to go back to the Loystrom notebooks. So um, they have a brand new color. It's the official bullet journal, Blue 22. It's a very nice blue color, 120 GSM paper. It has all these really cool features in it. If you head over to youtube.com slash men who bullet, you'll see my whole notebook review. And it's one for the new bullet journals. It's like official bullet journal, Blue 22. I love it. And I'm really excited about it because the Loystroms that I used back in the day didn't have as nice of paper. And so my pen would ghost on the other side. So as I was writing with it, you could flip that page, then you would see my writing on the other side. And that really bothered me. With the Loystroms and them having the new 120 GSM paper, it doesn't do that as much. Um, you know, some pens are going to do that, inkier pens, but I've always loved the paper. It was just finding like the right time and the right notebook to come back to. And it's weird because I've been using Archer and Olive notebooks for, oh my gosh, how many? Like five. I think I have five that I've used previously. So, you know, it's putting that on the back burner for a little bit. I have a ton of their notebooks, so I'll definitely be using them again. I'm not going to be buying any extra that I don't need, but I'm excited to come back to this. I'm excited also for the A5. I've been using the B5, which is the larger notebook all year. One of the reasons I'm also going a bit smaller is that I'm actually going to be introducing another notebook into it. So I'm going to be a two notebook person for 2023, at least as I'm getting started with it, because I'm introducing this really cool yearly task planner. So this is from Appointed. Appointed is actually a local stationary shop uh, in DC, not too far away from where I live. And they have amazing planners. People just love, love, love their planners. Their aesthetic is beautiful. So I'm using uh, one this year and it's going to be new for me. I've actually used their notebooks and I used a task planner like this before, but the reason I'm doing this is because I have a bit of a different need with work right now. So in my full-time job, which is my all-time job, all of this other stuff is just a fun hobby, the podcast, the Instagram, the YouTube, all those things. I 
and in design operations, which essentially is like supporting a design team. So it's kind of like project program management, but focused within design because design is in my background. And what I'm finding is like, I do need to plan ahead and not that the bullet journal method can't do that for me. It's all built in. It can. I just need something a bit more visual in my bullet journal. I don't plan like a month and ahead. I'm planning week by week as I go through because things change. But as a very non-visual aid, as a very functional, straightforward aid, I'm going to be using this task planner for myself, which is pretty cool. I really like it. Uh, you can hear me probably flipping through it now. But what I love about this is that it really focuses on like that weekly overview and task and notes, but it's also dated. So I'm able to kind of put things in the future and pencil them in when I need to. I just think it's going to work better for my brain right now because some weeks I just lose everything. I write it down in my bullet journal, but there's just something about it right now that just isn't quite working for me. So I'm excited to introduce both of those. I think my regular bullet journal is going to be kind of like the fun journal, and it's probably going to shift a bit more towards home versus for work. Honestly, it'll probably be both because the thing about the task planner is that there's not a lot of room for notes and like collection pages. And I need that as part of what I'm doing. If you're into bullet journaling, um, you'll understand collection pages are like a key part of it. And I need to be able to write down long form notes and things. The task planner isn't really made for that. So by using these two together, I'm trying to really rethink the way that I'm I'm looking at journaling for this year. And maybe you're in the same spot too. And if it's helpful, I'd like to share with you how I came to that decision and, and what I did, because I kind of use my bullet journal for it, honestly, is just opening up a page. And I just listed out kind of like a brain dump of the things that I needed to do in my planner or in my journal or like just with work as a whole. And so I started with like what I wanted, which was a way to really look ahead easily to be able to make sure that I'm paying attention to meetings and future events and things like that at a glance, real quick, just flip a page and do that. And I wasn't getting that in my bullet journal, like I said. So I know that the bullet journal wasn't gonna be all that I needed. But I also know that I needed space for notes and I like task and I like visual note taking and doing all of that. So I knew that I had to have a notebook with me, a blank notebook in some way, shape or form. So that's what I really did. So I sat down and talked about everything that I wanted out of it. You know, I also created another place of like a need, you know, what do I need to get from this? And I know that I needed a few specs, you know, I know I needed for at least for my bullet journal, I needed nice paper, I needed paper that I could handle different types of pens. I love pens as a hobby. We actually talked about pens in a previous podcast. So if you haven't listened to that one, you can hear all about my pen addiction. But it was really important for me to be able to use those things in my notebook. So that's kind of on there too. And then I made a list of things that I didn't want. Because I think as much as you want and need things, it's also important to think about what I don't want. And I think for myself... You know, I, I was kind of going like, what do you mean what you don't want, Mark? You want everything. You want it all. You want it all in one spot and you just can't find it yet. But what I didn't want was anything to get too crazy. I've never had two notebooks at the same time, at least seriously. I've had like, oh, this is my sketchbook or, oh, this is a reflection journal. Oh, and then here's my main bullet journal. And I always keep the bullet journal, but then all the other things kind of go away because they're not my main thing. So, you know, I know that I didn't want to go too far with it. And I think two notebooks is as far as I can go. I know some people that have multiple planners for a lot of different things. I just can't do that. So I'll have my bullet journal. I'll have my task planner from appointed. And I think that this is going to be good for me. And so if you are in the same spot where you're kind of thinking through, well, what the hell am I going to do for this new year? That's what I would recommend. Just take a page, break it up in three parts what I want, what I need, and what I don't want. And then that'll really help you hopefully define and think about how you want to go about what that next planner or that next thing is going to look like. You know, the other thing that I, I know that I wanted, but I know I'm not getting out of this is because of content planning and things like that that I'm doing, I know that I needed to find a better way to help myself organize all the things. It's funny that at work, I have a lot of digital products that I use. I use Airtable, we use Trello, you know, we're inside of the Microsoft 360 suite, but bullet journaling and, and analog has been really important for me. And as much as I love all the other technology, I did need something that was going to help me out. And so I did another notebook review recently um, with Anto 
And uh, this is really cool because it's like, um, it's a notebook, but it has a magnet on the binder and in the center for the binding that you can use. And so like I can take these things out and put stuff in as I need to, and it makes really cool noises. But what I love is that it has these cool template pages that I can use. So like right now uh, I'm planning and we're getting ready to run the creative block party, which is something that um, we do every year, myself and Missy Briggs, and we're excited to bring it back in like a week. So, uh, you know, keep your eyes peeled for that. But, you know, just using these really cool like fold out planners and to-do lists, it's just a checklist. It's not bullet journaling, it's none of that, but I can keep those in there. I can keep a project planner in here. And it's just a nice, I don't know, it's a nice analog way to kind of keep things together. And I have this for home and I'm just like, you know what, Mark, you need to kind of slim your stuff down. Cause I have, you know, probably three three notebooks that I use for different like ideas, but none of them are sticking in one spot. So I needed something a bit better. I've got the plotter that I tried to use, but I think the narrow size is just too narrow and small for me. So I'm going to try to run things inside of this one for like at home, but you know what? I might not actually need this because if I'm using my bullet journal for more home stuff, maybe that just becomes it. I don't know. You know, I'm trying stuff out every year. It's something different. And as you can hear, like in my voice, like I'm confused about what I'm doing. You know, I have a good plan. I know kind of where I'm going with all of this and what I want from it, from doing that exercise, but it's probably going to change as all things tend to do with my entire life. I put these little fun ideas inside my brain and then I, you know, just keep following them until I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> It's a problem, but it also is incredibly exciting all at the same time. You know, thinking about how you're going to approach the year and be productive is really exciting. And it'd be interesting too, because I think if you start to write out some of your wants and your needs and your don't wants, then you might actually find that it's not an analog notebook at all, but in fact, a digital product that you might be looking for. So maybe you're looking for a digital planner that you can keep on your iPad. You know, maybe something like Zinnia could be cool for you. I love that app so much. Maybe using Trello or Airtable or Notion or OneNote or any of those other ideas are what you're looking for. But you're not going to be able to find that out until you go through some type of exercise to really understand what it is. You can try all of them. I know I have. But without an actual intention of what you want to try to do with it, it can get a little bit difficult. And then you end up just kind of spinning into the swirl of taking all this time to set up a, a Notion document only to find out that you haven't really thought about it too much and you kind of keep getting lost in the minutia of like, oh, a new page, but then I want a new tab with this new feature and this new function. And then you're in so deep, you don't even want to look at your Notion documents anymore. So just make sure you are taking the time and really thinking about what you want to get out of your different system or your planner or uh, product, whatever you're using. And then I think it's going to be the most helpful for you. And then just like I said before, don't overthink it. Give yourself the freedom to make mistakes, to try new things, to add, to subtract. And then maybe by mid-year, maybe by the end of the year, you will have a firm idea of what you want to do. Or we'll come to the end of the year, we'll reflect and talk about what we learned this year about ourselves and about our planner systems, and we'll make a whole new decision next year. Like That's the fun. Like We're adults, and we get to have fun like that and do fun things like that as well. I'd be excited to hear from you on what you're doing for this year, whether you want to drop a comment in the comments on the podcast when you're leaving that review. If you are watching this on YouTube and you are interested in leaving any comments below, I'd love to hear from you on like what your planner setup is going to be or maybe what's worked for you and what haven't. Of course, you can also hit us up on Instagram. Hobbyist Hangout is where you can find this podcast. And then you can also find me over at Men Who Bullet. As always, I really appreciate you hanging out with me for the Hobbyist Hangout podcast and just talking about hobbies and things that are going on as we're getting into this new year. I really do hope that you find some planner peace and really figure out what you're doing and uh, come back again because we're going to be talking about some other things in the new year, specifically around some different habits, some different habit tracking that we've been doing, methods and things that I've learned over time, really trying to evolve this podcast into something that's helpful that I can share with you, but also something that we can enjoy together and I'm also picking up some new hobbies too. I'm just like such a newbie at it right now that I'm like, is that a topic anyone is interested in talking about? I took up disc golf this summer, which I really loved. A buddy of mine just got me into Magic the Gathering, which is something that I thought I'd never ever play in my entire life. So, you know, new hobbies coming all the time, along with continuing to evolve the bullet journaling and planning fun as well. As always, it's great hanging out with you and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you again for hanging out with me on the Hobbyist Hangout Podcast. <laughs>